Hi there, I'm Louis Tafari of Romanitas Press, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the use of the Protalus or the clapper during the last three days of Holy Week. The last three days of Holy Week are called the Sacred Tritium. They consist of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. And during those days, we have the customary use of the crotalus. The word crotalus is Latin, comes from a Greek word which actually means rattle. There are several different types of this that exist. There's uh, this type that is commonly seen in the United States. Uh, it consists of a handle, striker plate, and of course of the striker itself. Another type that exists is this little small job, little clapper clamshell type. Uh, another type that you'll see is uh, again, look more like a ratchet or a rattle, and it actually spins around, and it creates that, uh, that, that sound that you could hear, sometimes done in sound effects, um, maybe in the movies or other things as well. Now, the first thing is, the use of the crotalus is actually by custom. It's not prescribed by the rubrics. This is mentioned by uh, such rubricians as Fortescue, um, but it's commonly done. And it's used to replace the altar bell from the glory of Holy Thursday up until the Gloria of the Easter Vigil. And the reason for that is the altar bell is a symbol of joy. In fact, even the church bells, the sacristy bell, they should all be suppressed as well because after the glory of Holy Thursday, we begin now to enter into the greatest part of our Lord's passion. And so this is used to strike a very somber tone and it's used out of custom in the very same places where you would normally ring either the altar bell or the sacristy bell or even the church bells. And I'm going to explain real quick um, how that's done. Um, as I said, this use is only customary, so there's no actual real prescription or rules on how the crotalus is even used. However, I want to demonstrate to you a very dignified and somber method for doing that. Um, with the caveat as well um, that other ways that are, are done often sound rather violently. Um, they're somewhat disturbing and could even damage uh, your crotalus. So the use of the altar bell, there is prescriptions on that that the Ripperitians do talk about as well as the missile. Now I address this on uh, my website. There are two articles up there right now, part one and part two. They describe not only the history of the altar bell, the construction of the altar bell, but the proper use of the altar bell, how it should be wrong. And just quickly, the altar bell is supposed to be wrong in an up-down fashion, making a double stroke for each ring. So at the Sanctus, ting ding, ting ting, ting ting. Um, the method of ringing them side to side is actually not technically correct. Um, so what I'm going to show you imitates that same practice on the altar bell. So you may have seen in some places or even heard um, where they actually take this, uh, this type of the crotalus and they actually do this type of a striker. Now, the difficulty with this is, first thing is, that is a very jarring or even violent type of sound, especially in a smaller church. Um, it's not very elegant. It's not extremely dignified. But I would say another thing, too, is um, this can actually damage your crotalus. And I've actually witnessed this. Um, I've seen where the striker plate has been literally split in half, or as you can imagine, the striker itself has come off of its lever. Um, so I would very much discourage using that method, even if maybe you're, this has been made to do it in that fashion. Um, what I'm going to show you uh, imitates the way that the altar bell should be ideal, ideally rung. So essentially, you're holding this uh, in your left hand, and with your right hand, you'll now take the striker, and you will make a double uh, clap for every double ring, you double stroke, that is, of the altar bell. So, so that would have been what we would have done at the Sanctus. Now, that's certainly loud enough to fill a small church, even a large church would sound. It's still dignified. And again, like I said, it, it doesn't jar everyone out of the pew. Um, and at the same time, it, it, it gives the alert that we want to give 
for that. So um, also, if you notice, I, I gave a little pause between each double clack. And the reason for that is, again, you did the same thing with the altar bell, ting, 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 ting. And on my altar bell article number two, in fact, I actually give um, audio samples of what the bell should sound like. And so I'm imitating that here. So I want to, what I just did for you with those three double claps was, in fact, what we do at the Sanctus. It would be the same thing um, at the elevations. Obviously, you would do one double for the genuflection of the celebrant. Another double as he raises the sacred species, where, whether it's the host or the precious blood in the chalice. And then finally, for the final genuflection, another ring. I, either time, you know, if you have like at the Ankijitor where he places his hands over the oblations, it's just going to be one double. Same thing for the Domini Non Sum Dinius, you're going to do a double after each time he says. So Domini Non Sum Dinius, Domini Non Sum Dinius. Domini non sum dinius. And that's, that's basically what you're looking at there. Um, now, the, this will also get used in place of uh, the bells during the translation of the Blessed Sacrament. So the translation of the Blessed Sacrament occurs on Holy Thursday at the end of the Mass. It's taken to the altar of repose. During Good Friday, the Blessed Sacrament is brought to the altar for our, the distribution of Holy Communion. And then actually after the end of the service of the Psalm Afternoon Liturgy, it's returned to the altar of repose again and, and hidden, so to speak. The clapper would be used for these three times, translations, okay? Now again, I want to give you a, a good kind of rule of thumb here on how to do this in a dignified manner with the clapper. The, the, my biggest critique that I, have, that I have for people during translation of the Blessed Sacrament when they're using the clapper is they don't give enough time, they don't pause long enough between each set of times that they clap the clapper. And that's really important for creating this somber, dramatic effect as we're processing. You've got plenty of time to, to do the clapper. You don't have to do it uh, every fifth of a second to make it effective. So let me give you an example. Again, we're going to imitate what would be done ideally with the, with the altar bell as well. So, as we're processing from the high altar to the altar of repose, let me give you a, a 30 second preview of what this would sound like. That's the general idea right there. There's just a nice lengthy pause uh, between each set that I'm doing. And as we're walking, and the Pange Lingua is being sung on Holy Thursday, on Good Friday, it's, it's uh, generally in silence, okay? Um, again, it's gonna have that dramatic effect. But I do say having those lengthy pauses between really helps to emphasize each double set of clap that you give. So anyways, there are some ideas there on what you can do to effectively use your crotalus during the sacred tritium. Uh, another thing is this would also be used to signal everyone in place of the sanctuary bell or sacristy bell before you um, process in um, every single time you would use that normally, okay? Um, so. In fact, the church bells technically would be silenced as well. They, they wouldn't even be rung for the Angelus, okay? Um, and in fact, there's some places, um, there's a YouTube video of a church in Malta that has a type of crotalus. They actually crank it. It's extremely loud. And it's taking the place of the altar bell to either for the, to announce for the Angelus or to announce the faithful, it is now time to come to church. Uh, which was another reason in some countries that they would actually uh, ring the altar bell, okay? Um, so this is another interesting custom where they, they silence the joy of the bells during these last three, uh, during these last three days of holy. So I hope you found this little video on the Cortales somewhat helpful and instructive. Um, just a reminder, I do have ceremonial notes for Holy Week, very detailed and comprehensive. 
um, they're available on my website. Just uh, go up to, um, it'll be store and it'll pop out and it'll say ceremonial notes. And you just scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll see them there. Um, also, please consider subscribing to my free email updates. Again, just click on subscribe on the side. And lastly, um, if you found this video to be helpful, um, please share it with others. And also, please consider making a donation uh, to Romanitas Press. Uh, again, you just click on support on the bottom and uh, you can do it through PayPal with any credit card or you can send a check in the mail. Anything is helpful. And I always pray um, for the benefactors of Romanitas Press uh, every day. I um, want to wish all of you a blessed and fruitful Holy Week in preparation for the great uh, joy and triumph of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So until next time, I'm Louis Tafari of Romanitas Press, and God bless.